Alright, so this is going to be my third movie review today. This one's called The Cape Canaveral Monsters. Uh, this flick is from 1960. It's in black and white. It's low budget B movie, uh, story, screenplay, and direction coming from none other, none other than Phil Tucker of uh, Robot Monster Infamy. I thought Phil Tucker well, wanted to commit suicide after he did Robot Monster. I had no idea that he had other movies, but um, was a little blurb in there on the Psychotronic Video Guy. So I loaded up on my instant. Uh, View view uh, Q on uh, Netflix. Um, I'm down to the C's in the Psychotronic Video Guide. So this one uh, starts with a C. I just finished Canterbury Tales and now uh, um, the Keep Canaveral Monsters. I think the next one that I'm going to review is the Tomb. Unless I get well, I'm going to get season five of. Uh, Adventures of Superman in the mail tomorrow, so I'll probably review that one before I review the, the tomb, or it's just called Superman um, from 1950 something. George <laughs> George Reeves, no relation to Christopher Reeve. Um, excuse me. Ah, got allergies. Maybe my son's getting me cold. I don't know. I just changed his dirty diaper constipation for a couple of days. Anyway, uh, getting back to this movie, uh, the Cape Canaveral monsters. Um, so this is about um, a couple of um, green uh, balls of light. They come to uh, possess. A um, couple of humans on on the beach. Um, they hang out by the car, and then uh, when when the guy's driving the car with the girl inside, uh, that's when the two green orbs take possession of them, and they crash and hit a tree or something. Um, so the humans die, but the uh, the green orbs possess their body. And the guy's the guy's arm gets severed. That was kind of cool. Uh, so he takes his arm to get reattached, but, um, but then some military dude shoots it off, and uh, and it gets detached again. So he has to find another human to reattach it. Uh, that's a little sidebar story, but. Uh, first part of the movie, he's missing an arm, basically. Um, so it turns out these uh, these two green orbs they happen to be aliens who are taking uh, who are preparing for an invasion. Meanwhile, they they use like an eight foot long ray gun, a ridiculous looking device. So it looks like it came out of a toy store. Um, <laughs> And uh, they use it to shoot down all the uh, all the rockets that are being launched from Cape Canaveral. Uh, I noticed a lot of um, a couple of reviews on Netflix had it um, had mentioned that uh, this takes place in California. And Cape Canaveral was supposed to be in um, in Florida. Um, I'll tell you. I'm looking in the Psychotron video guide right now um, to find out exactly where this was shot. This may have been the same place where Robot Monster was shot. That, that was what I was thinking, but uh, yeah, I don't know that for a fact. Uh, that's just a wild ass guess on my part. Um, there's a German scientist in this. Uh, he's pretty funny. Uh, armless male alien, like I said. Oh, Bronson Canyon. Yes, it is. It is uh, the, the uh, same side as Robot Monster. Uh, so that's pretty cool. Um, 
I, I guess people didn't get that when they made reviews on IMDb and Netflix, but uh, but I did catch that. Um, so, woohoo! Anyway, um, getting back to the story. So, uh, so what these aliens are doing? They uh, they possess human bodies. Um, they're getting ready for an invasion. Uh, they shoot down the uh, the rockets from Cape Canaveral, like I said, with that ridiculous-looking ray gun, and um, and they do some weird experiments on humans, like um, some kind of electro shock therapy. They got some hydrogen goo that they use to uh, transmit humans to their planet, but somewhere in the solar system, but they don't say which planet they're from. Uh, I'm guessing they're from Mars. Who knows? But um, anyways, um, so they they capture a bunch of humans from uh, Cape Canaveral or uh, California, whichever Bronson Canyon, whichever the case may be, and um, and. Um, they, the the uh, humans managed to escape a couple times, um, and they they managed to light the um, the hydrogen mixture on fire, like make this big explosion with um, salt and um, plastic, which is kind of strange. Um, it's not exactly hydrogen, mind you. It's some kind of alien mixture that's more powerful than hydrogen. I think the ger mad German scientist says it's to the 200th power more powerful than hydrogen, which is kind of funny um, listening to them talk about um, chemistry and stuff. Uh, but um, So they make this huge explosion. There's like um, rocks uh, falling and um, and uh, you know explosion noises and stuff. Uh, that that all looks pretty fake. I mean, uh, this one it's not quite as bad as uh, Robot Monster, but still gets a 3.0 rating. On IMDb and uh, a 2.5 rating on uh, Netflix, uh, which is which would be the equivalent of a five rating on uh, IMDb. Um, so I wouldn't say it's it's quite as bad as Robot Monster, but um, it's pretty close. I remember uh, d during the late 80s, man, they, they had uh, Robot Monster on a VHS tape. And it was in 3D, man. It came with uh, 3D glasses. That was pretty cool. Um, I don't think I've ever owned uh, another VHS tape that uh, had 3D glasses with it. I think that was the only one I ever owned. Um, of course, my wife took it. My, my first wife took it when we divorced, but... Uh, Anyway, great flick. I gave it five stars on uh, Netflix. Yeah, if you like really bad movies, um, you're going to love this one. Um, what else can I say? Uh, Phil, Phil Tucker, 1960. How could you go wrong with this? I mean, uh, the acting's bad. Special effects, uh, non-existent. Um... Uh, the set design is looks really cheap, you know, like something from uh, Plan 9. But um, yeah, great flick. I love bad movies, by the way. Um, I didn't like uh, Beast of the Yucca Flats or Manos Hands of Fate, but this one was pretty laughable. Um, I got some chuckles out of it. Um, so check it out. Benito says, you gotta love it. Phil Tucker, 1960. Later.